Hey, welcome back to the third session of the Catalyst course. In that previous session, we looked at a big picture strategy for making disciples, which includes the use of our three video-based courses, plus this Catalyst course. But as I hope to now show you in this session, there is tremendous potential if you were all to combine your efforts and make these courses available as church-wide opportunities. And what I mean by that is for you as a church regularly to be running, um, so either centrally at the church or maybe in leaders' homes, all of the following. So first, you're going to regularly be running the Catalyst course so that people can continually be empowered in this way. Secondly, you're going to continually run the Can We Know God course. That's that pre-evangelism or van evangelistic home-based Bible study. So that's constantly going to be running in the life of the church so, th so that if someone has an unsaved friend that they want to invite to something, they know that there is a Can We Know God course or an Alpha course or something starting soon within the life of the church. Then thirdly, you're going to have evangelistic meetings regularly to which people can invite their, their friends and family, colleagues, etc. Now, what, what I mean by that is you need to make sure as a church that in your Sunday meetings and perhaps at other special evangelistic events during the, the sort of monthly calendar of the church, there is a, an evangelistic witness. Martin Lloyd-Jones uh, maintained very strongly that every church needs to have an evangelistic service once a week. And in fact, uh, he at Westminster in, in England, he had his evangelistic service on a Sunday night. Then fourthly, there's this discipleship kind of ministry block of events. And I think this block of events needs to run regularly within the life of the church. Now, that's a combination of the five foundations course. And again, that can be either church based or home based. That immediately then is followed by baptisms. Uh, where people are also prayed for to receive the Holy Spirit. And then that is followed by the God breathed and profitable course, which is that 10 week uh, home based Bible study. OK, so if those events are being run centrally by the church and the church makes sure that there is a constant cycle of those events happening, that then empowers Christian as he's trying to ma make um, a, a disciple of Joe to be able to plug into things that are happening at the church. So let's take Christian and Joe as an example here. Instead of inviting Joe to do the Can We Know God course just with him, so just the two of them doing it together, Christian now knows that in a couple of weeks' time, the church is hosting a Can We Know God course. And that might be in someone else's home or it might be at the church building. But Christian decides, okay, what he's going to do is he's going to plug into that event and bring Joe with him. And that, of course, has the added benefit of Joe coming to this little course and meeting other people and beginning to see Christian community at work. And of course, the same can be then true of all the other events that I just listed for you um, along that discipleship timeline. Instead of Christian having to do all of this on his own with Joe, he can just take Joe along with him to church-based meetings and courses. But you understand that he's not just taking Joe to random events at the church here. There is a strategic discipleship journey that is clear in his mind. It's clear in the church's strategy. And now he's leading Joe along this this pathway, but the church is supporting him to do it. Okay, so let's talk about how this could actually work in practice, because this now has some implications for you as a local church. As you look at the diagram of this discipleship journey, you now see a church at the bottom level, supporting this journey which individuals are on at the top level. And this church is now enabling evangelism and enabling early discipleship in the life of their church. So number one, they are regularly running the Catalyst course. Number two, someone or perhaps a group of people, if multiple events are running, is regularly running the Can We Know God course in the life of the church or whatever evangelistic course uh, you'd prefer to use so that when 
Christian or your average church member now has attended the catalyst course and is now ready to invite someone to an evangelistic Bible study, he knows that there is a Can We Know God course that is starting in the near future in the life of the church. Why? Because someone in the church has taken responsibility to make sure that it's happening regularly. Now, that M1, that stands for ministry position number one, because what I'm also going to show you as we walk through the church-based strategy is how the strategy opens up six new ministry opportunities for people in the church to volunteer to play. You know, you cannot create a culture of invitation in your church if there are not powerful evangelistically focused events happening regularly in the life of the church. The people in your church have to know that, man, there is something that I can bring my unsaved family friends to and the gospel is going to be preached there. Right then, thirdly, this church is supporting evangelism, early discipleship, by making sure that this block of ministry here, which I'm now um, marking as M2, ministry position number two, they're making sure that that is constantly running in the church. So you've got this group of dedicated early discipleship leaders who are ensuring that this sequence of events is constantly repeating in the life of the church. So that whenever someone does respond to the gospel in one of your meetings, you as a church will definitely be having a Five Foundations course beginning soon. And as you will remember from the previous session, that Five Foundations course is the first step in that early discipleship block of events. So Five Foundations then leads into the baptisms, which then leads into their joining a small group for the God-breathed and profitable course. So that block of early discipleship events needs to be running regularly in the life of the church. Now, this is going to require, just like in the previous point, you having a dedicated group of leaders whose ministry it is in the life of your church to make sure that this block of events is happening regularly. So they take responsibility for making sure the Five Foundations course is happening regularly. They then facilitate the baptisms of the people coming out of the Five Foundations course and they then immediately transition with those people into hosting them, maybe in their home, for the next 10 weeks to finish the God Breathed and Profitable course. Okay, so early discipleship leaders will be doing this block of events over and over again in the life of the church. And that's M2. So the second ministry position that this now opens up for people to get excited about and volunteer for in your church. So I hope you're getting the picture here that somebody has to take responsibility for these ministries. And if you've got a bigger church, there's lots of activity, you're going to need more than one person in each of those blocks of ministry. And we've identified two of them so far. So evangelistic Bible study ministry and early discipleship ministry. Now, as you study this vision, it's not going to take you very long before you begin seeing another huge opportunity for your church. Okay, something that the church can do, which individual Christians can't do. And that is to be able to use your Sunday services to cause people to respond to the gospel. And that's whether they've been invited by a friend or not. They might have just wandered in that morning. Now you have an opportunity as a church in your weekly meetings to make this lightning bolt happen. And if you are preaching evangelistically, especially if you have an evangelism service on a Sunday, and if your altar call strategy is effective, you can then use your Sundays and other dedicated evangelistic services to feed this block of events here, this early discipleship block of events. Now, I don't want to um, labor the point here, but I just want to make sure that I'm communicating clearly what I would love to see happening in the life of your church is that every Sunday there is some kind of call to salvation made and that 
however you choose to handle it, it does effectively shepherd people who are responding into the five foundations course, which, because you've got someone leading it, is going to be starting soon in the life of your church at any point during the year. And then at the end of the five foundations course, you know that a bunch of them are going to commit themselves to being baptized as Christians. And then you know that those people are going to get straight into a 10 week small group to complete the God breathed and profitable course. It's incredibly exciting as an evangelist, when you stand up and you preach to a crowd, knowing when I give my altar call today, these people are going to be well shepherded and discipled from the moment they respond to my gospel. As opposed to, I go somewhere, I preach, I give an altar call, and then we pray the sinner's prayer, and I don't know what's going to happen with them afterwards. This is a far more faithful way of setting up your evangelism within a local church because it is looking at the big picture of making disciples of these people. Now, if you want that vision to become a reality in your church meetings, then there is another ministry team that you are going to need to set up. So if you don't have this already, I'm going to strongly suggest that you need to establish an altar counseling team. An altar counseling team. So what is that? Well, this is a team of people whom you have trained for this role and they serve on a, on a roster probably so that at every single meeting there is a group of them waiting to come alongside those who respond to the gospel and who will then follow up with those people the next day. They will introduce them to one of the early discipleship leaders and they will make sure that they get plugged into a five foundations class. Now that altar counseling team role then opens up M3. So the third ministry role within the life of your church, which members can volunteer for. Now, if I am coming to do a series of evangelistic meetings for your church in the future or one of our evangelists. Okay, so if this catalyst course that you're busy doing is part of a bigger project that we're working on with you as a church, then... One of the things we will do is we will train your altar counseling team. Now, in the pack that you got when you came into the Catalyst course, you will find a little booklet in there called Your Decision to Follow Jesus as Lord. Now, this little booklet is what we get your altar counselors to use when they sit with someone who has just responded to the gospel. It is an unbelievable little resource which goes through some of the basics of the gospel with them again and sets up the next step, which is their joining a five foundations class. So we're going to help you with that. That is a resource. So you're going to need an altar counseling team. Now that's a third new ministry position that we've kind of created through the strategy with which people in your church can get excited and volunteer for them. And I want to encourage you, this is one of the secrets of building a vibrant, successful church. You've got to get people involved. You've got to get your members serving. You've got to give them opportunities to exercise their gifts. You know, this is the priesthood of all believers. And if you've followed me so far, you'll understand how our whole strategy opens up this whole new list of ministry opportunities for people in your church. Every church member has a role to play in making disciples. Everyone gets to build up the church. So because at the end of this course, you are going to fill in a volunteer form to get involved in one of these ministries. What I want to do now is I want to just recap what role or roles you can play in all this. And then there's three more to the three we've already listed that I'm going to add to the list. So first, you may want to volunteer to be an evangelistic Bible study small group leader. Okay, so you would dedicate yourself to running regularly the Can We Know God course within the life of the church or Alpha or whatever you choose to use. And you would do that either in your own home or as a group leader around the tables if you do it centrally at your church building. 
So as you sit there now and you're thinking about, man, what could I volunteer for? You might decide, you know, that little piece of the strategy really excites me. I'm, I'm going to dedicate my ministry contribution in this church to making sure there is always an evangelistic course running in the life of this church, which people from the church can plug into with their friends. And of course, as a church, you would need to then make sure that those courses are publicized effectively to the church. So as the church, you're supporting the people who take up this ministry so that everyone in the church always knows what's happening with the evangelistic Bible studies and they can register easily to bring their friends. And of course, depending on the size of your church, you would have to decide how how frequently you could run those courses. Right. Then second. You may want to volunteer to serve on the altar counseling team for your Sunday meetings and then for other evangelistic events that the church puts on. And this is a fantastic ministry. Both my wife and I have served on altar counseling teams. And I tell you, it is exciting, particularly if you've got either an evangelistic gifting or a pastoral gifting to be able to you know, sit with someone, come alongside someone who has just responded to the gospel it puts you in an amazing space with these people. You sit down with them. You, you ask them why they've responded. What's going through their heart? What are they feeling? Do they understand the gospel? And then you pray with them. And then obviously the main job of the altar counselor in our strategy is to make sure that these people take the next step and immediately commit to attending a five foundations course. And that, of course, will require that you follow up with them probably the next day. So you're acting a bit like a midwife. You are making sure that this baby gets properly delivered. And part of your responsibility as an altar counselor would be to get their contact details for follow up the next day. So at the end of this course, maybe that's the ministry position that you'd like to volunteer for, the altar counseling team. Then, of course, the third ministry position that we've already listed is you might want to volunteer to be responsible for that block of early discipleship events. So you want to commit to running the Five Foundations course. You want to facilitate the baptisms then afterwards and then immediately host those people in the 10-week God Breathed and Profitable course. And that is an exciting ministry if you've got kind of like a teaching gift or a very strong pastoral teaching kind of heart, because that's the ministry of picking people up after they have responded to the gospel and now playing that all important role of continued early discipleship in their lives. And that is a crucial role in our strategy, because it's these leaders who really do play the most influential Well, evangelistic, surprisingly enough, and pastoral role for the people who are responding to the gospel in some way in your meetings. So maybe that's the ministry that you'd like to um, volunteer for. And of course, depending on how how long you take to do the five foundations course, because remember that course can be done over a weekend, it can be done in a single day, or it could be done over five weeks. Depending how long you do to take that, if you then factor in their baptism afterwards, and then the 10 weeks for the God breathed and profitable course, this is a sort of three to four month commitment with each group that you take on before you then will probably hand them off to a normal home group leader. And during that time, it's also going to be very important that you make time to meet with these people one on one because discipleship is relational. Okay, so this early discipleship ministry really puts you on the cutting edge of bringing new Christians into the kingdom. Well, and maybe that's the kind of pastoral teaching type role that you'd really like to play. Okay, so that's what we've done so far. Now I'm going to add three more ministries that... I think you can volunteer for that this strategy opens up. If I or one of our evangelists are going to come and do a major outreach at your church in the future, as part of your preparation for those events, we insist that you have a dedicated prayer team. You must have a prayer campaign. And so maybe you want to be part of a team of intercessors. 
So this is a dedicated prayer team who meet at least on a weekly basis to pray specifically for revival, for the falling of the Spirit upon the church and upon the meetings, and of course for all of those upcoming events. Now that's M4 on your diagram because that's ministry position number four that I think our strategy unlocks. Then the catalyst course is going to need to be run regularly in the life of the church. Because even with people who are getting saved and discipled, like we said with Joe, we want them to be empowered to be witnesses themselves. So this course needs to be running regularly in the life of the church. And maybe that's the ministry that you'd like to volunteer for. Maybe you want to make sure that the catalyst course is going to be running regularly in your church. So that's M5. And then finally, the last ministry position that I think this strategy opens up is for evangelists themselves. You know, the more moments that you can create in the life of your church where that lightning bolt can strike, the better. So let's say as elders, you can identify a couple of Ephesians 4 evangelists in your congregation. Why not support them and release them to have an impact with their gift. So what you could do, for example, is you might set up a monthly breakfast at a local restaurant, which you publicize well to the church. So you're supporting the events with your resources and maybe advertise them publicly or whatever. And, and then one of your evangelists is responsible for that breakfast. They will address the crowd. And obviously you would encourage your members to bring their, their friends to that event. And then you would then also need a couple of your altar counseling teams at the uh, team members at that event to make sure that the discipleship track is picked up straight afterwards. So as you sit there, if you believe that you do have the gift of the evangelist, please indicate that on your volunteer form. And then of course your elders can go about the process of assessing that claim, which they are responsible to do before the Lord. And if they agree, then they can begin supporting you as an evangelist. Okay, that concludes this session. And maybe this is a video which you as an eldership team might want to mo watch more than once if it's still a bit unclear because this strategy has huge potential for your church to bring far more of your members into an active role within the church's ministry life, which is tremendously excited. You know, many church leaders are frustrated by a lack of involvement from their church members. You know, there's just not enough people serving. Well, I'm suggesting to you that a great way to solve that problem is to open up a whole new list of ministry roles, which people can get excited about and volunteer for, that see them playing an active role in making disciples. So this is not, you know, the tea making ministry or something like that. Not that that's not important, but you are helping people in their individual capacity now fulfill the Great Commission because you're making these roles available. And that is exactly what we as the Ephesians 4 ministry officers are meant to do, isn't it? We are meant to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. And I believe that implementing Barleyfield's strategy is an amazing way of doing that. Right, then, to all of you who are the regular church members, not the elders, who are watching this video, please be ready at the end of this course for that form that you are going to fill in to volunteer to play one of those six roles, if you want to. Now, obviously, your elders have the responsibility before God to assess whether or not they think you are ready for that role and they have the right to do that. But let them do it so that they can then release you at the right time. Now, in our next session, we are going to change gears entirely and we are going to address two very important questions. What is the gospel and what is evangelism? Because obviously an agreement on those matters is essential for all of us to be able to work together. So I want to have that discussion before we then introduce the actual personal evangelism strategy that we're going to get onto later. So I will see you in the next video.